First Lady of Kenya and the other First Ladies here that you have been playing an, an amazing role. Um, and I do believe, um, as, a, as a, a woman myself, a mother, that um, First Ladies play a really, really important role in um, mobilizing and drawing attention to this issue. So I'd like to ask you um, a little bit more about your own role, how you see others could also join you, and also please do speak a little bit about the innovations that Sierra Leone has been implementing in education and the skills space, because that has been incredible to watch as well. Thank you again. Um, yeah, first ladies, right? Mama. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I mean, when I, when I had the opportunity to talk about the role of first ladies, I would say we are problem solvers of all kinds, because every kind of problem is at our doors. But um, in Sierra Leone, at the moment, we have focused our efforts to support in entrepreneurship and innovation. Just as in Kenya, we have developed programs that provide education and training for youths to participate in the transition of green jobs. This is important, not only because we have high youth unemployment, but also a critical need to build a sustainable infrastructure that can offer safety to our citizens as we experience the effect of climate change. But the most important thing that Sierra Leone has done, and I think which I believe Africa needs to look at, is how much GDP they invest in education. Sierra Leone today is investing 22% of their GDP on education. The president is a co-chair with UNESCO on the transforming education that my sister here is talking about. And I also think what we need to look at now is the fact that Africa has the largest youth population. We need to find a way to make our population a fit for purpose population by giving them the right tool, the right education. When we're talking about climate change, it's not about, I mean, how do you become a lawyer or how do you become a doctor? We have to give them the right educational skill, the right tool. And, well, I could say military time. My husband is a military man, so forgive me if I try to, because he tried to implement military strategy even at home, the way we, you know. He will say, you cannot send someone in the battlefield if you don't give them the right tool to protect themselves and to protect the people around them. So if we're talking about climate change, let us also focus on how do we empower our young youths. Employment is very important. It doesn't matter what kind of education I have, if I'm not employed, it actually demoralized me. So how do we also find the opportunity to provide working skills so that when these youth go into these um, educational skills, they know that by the time they come out of that, they have a job ready for them. We also need to focus on that, change our narrative of what kind of education we need in Africa. Education that works in other places might not work in Africa right now. So how do we change the curriculum of the way we educate our children in Africa and gives them the right information, the right tools, you know. Um, when, I was, when, I, when I was in primary school, they, 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 only, they teach us in primary school about history, is how um, a white man came to Africa and uh, changed Africa, and we have the Africa we have today. Now, why don't we change that narrative and start to teach our children what is it that you need to do? What is the quantity of water you use? What is the kind, how do you deal with electricity? How, what are the things that we need to do to have a safer home, safer environment, safer community, and then empower them and enlighten them about what works for Africa? 
because the weather in Africa, the things, the way our um, the problems we have in Africa when it comes to climate change is totally different from what somebody in China or in South Korea or in America will have. How do we get our youths and our women? It is very important to include women in this arrangement because when women actually understand and grab a situation and they know that this is not only for them to make money, but it will save their children, it will save their home, they put everything in it. We need to make sure women are at the forefront of this arrangement also when we're talking about education, when we're talking about skill sets, the mindset of women. We need to empower women to understand climate change and the effect of climate change in our community and our children because every mother wants to protect their child. Every mother would want to protect their community. So I think we should also look at the set of people. Vulnerable people are important, the youths are important, but women are very critical in whatever decision we make when it comes to climate change and our survival in Africa. Thank you. Amazing, thank you so much. So, are we ready um, to go around? Um, one action, two sentences. I will start with you, Honorable Cabinet Minister Secretary. I think the microphone is next to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Kenya. One thing that we realized is that uh, we don't have the capacity, particularly of the teachers and the trainers, so we are building capacity at various levels because unless you have the capacity and whatever knowledge you want to pass over, it cannot happen. So through workshops, various seminars, we are undertaking that program and retooling our teachers so that they can also be able now to impart the same knowledge to our students. We are also taking various other measures particularly the educational uh, materials, may they be textbooks, to have an integration of climate change so that the various topics can be able to cover this in order for, for it. And any subject that students is undertaking, there will be some element, there will be some aspect of climate change, and therefore the necessary information will be passed over we are also encouraging, apart from the classroom, that uh, we start environmental crafts. And uh, finally, even what we have studied, carbon, uh, 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 carbon project in our schools. And we want to upscale this because this will reduce the greenhouse emissions because we are talking of 30% uh, reduction in Kenya by the year 2030. And finally, I appreciate what has been said in our Tibet institutions, the linkage between our Tibet institutions and the industry, so that we know where demand and opportunities are, particularly in the green economy. So I think as we are training our people, we are able to supply uh, the people required in industry. Thank you. I like the enthusiasm on the actions. So, um, Ingrid. What's your one action? I see so much energy in this room on this very specific subject. And I see such remarkable and applaudable leadership emerging from Africa on this very important subject. That I see huge opportunity to bring this, what is here now, to the next COP, to the next climate COP. And I would add my voice, my support, to the African voice on education skill development for a green future. And I see a lot of new partnerships that one could actually also make much bigger. And especially, I would commit myself really also to support all the conferences from youth, the youth organizations in the run up to the COP, where we can be a partner in actually making this theme a big one because your voice counts. If you demand more action, by governments in the international community, I think is going to happen. Perfect, thank you. Hannah, thank you. Uh, I think 
the one action would be incorporating a component in, pro in, in project financing to actually tailor it for knowledge transfer and capacity building. But uh, if you allow me, I just I couldn't uh, 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 you know let go of just highlighting two very important opportunities that I think would be very useful. One is the fact that, for example, in the fashion, sustainable fashion, the demand for skill over the last 10 years has been doubling. This is, you know, being in Kenya, the fashion, one of the fashion hubs in the continent, I think this is a huge opportunity for that sector to transform. Similarly, for the IT, which I know Her Excellency Mama Rachel has been a champion in leading that effort, and particularly for women, this is, and being, you know, the, the, the champion, Kenya being the champion of mobile banking, this is another opportunity to really get into green finance IT. So I think these are two key opportunities to consider Great. as well. Thank you. Well, um, thank, you thank you very much. Um, it's hard to boil it down to one action because there are so many that need to happen and I'm excited about everything we've talked about today. Cannot wait to partner with all of you. Um, I would say in the conference center right now, I think they're probably talking about energy transition. They're probably talking about climate adaptation, agriculture, water sanitation, reuse of water, many, many things like that. I think every time these discussions happen, there has to be a skills component. How are we training our youth to be able to take this forward? Perfect. Thank uh, That which gets uh, measured gets done. I think developing a mechanism uh, of uh, measuring impact will be yes. necessary so that uh, we can hold each other to account. Yeah. And that can be specific on labor market assessment, what are the skills required, and see whether the education system is focused on those skills and their deployment in the marketplace. Okay, great. Gino. Thank you. I'll say the one call to action is to encourage everyone to all play their part towards something they can do even in the smallest way within their communities. Because we're all waiting for the big decisions to be made. We're all waiting, perhaps for governments to act. But we can also as individuals contribute towards the green economy. Just this Saturday, I had an opportunity to go to Kibru, where I planted 100 fruit trees with the help of various youth institutions and young people that are be on the ground, not only a way to provide food security to the community, but also as a way to sit down with the students within that Hebrew community and teach them more about climate change and how they can even start from a younger age towards building a very resilient, climate resilient Africa. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I will turn it to Ndungu and I will allow for two people in the audience to also tell me what their action is and um, so uh, after you if you could prepare yourself I'll, ha I'll have two we unfortunately don't have time for more but um no we'll over to okay. you thank you uh two two things one that we should stop doing one that we should start doing stop doing we should stop thinking of pivot as an education system because it's not in mm -hmm. fact it is housed in kenya under the ministry of education but that's not the norm across the world TIVET is an aggregator system. It aggregates talent and skills and channels them to the sectors of the economy where it can do most good. The best analogy, and I'm glad Mr. Mwangi is here, is a functioning banking system. A banking system aggregates capital, channels it to the sectors of the economy where it should do most good. If our TIVET system was working, today we would not be talking about a shortage of farmers in Kenya. We would have been training those farmers already. We would have been responsive to it. One, other, one thing we should start doing, it's, having this change happen is all about incentives. Uh, one of the biggest incentives we can make to reform our TVEC systems is to put the private sector in charge of making the critical decisions as to which courses are going to be offered in what numbers, when and how. Today, most of those decisions are taken by specialists from the university or by bureaucrats uh, uh, within the ministry. I, uh, I have nothing against uh, your officers, Kuala CS, but I really think that is not a decision that they are equipped to make. The consumers of the skills we offer are the private sector. They should be the ones to tell us how we offer those skills and when and in what numbers. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we have two minutes left, so I can't take more than two. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to provide you with an email to... Um, <laughs> We're in trouble, yes, exactly. 